Hi there. Welcome to Collaging. I'm Frank Korb, and we're going to guide you through briefly how to start, finish a collage. What I have here today are a number of bits and pieces of my collaging material that obviously I've blue, I've got my, my scissors. Um, some of my imagery I've already begun to develop and I've got my magazines, uh, the trusty old National Geographic and, and some extra imagery that I've got. As I build a collage, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. In this case, I wanted to try and have some sort of a, a home environment, um, whether it be rural or urban, or in this case, it would be kind of a, a, a well, I guess a, a rural sort of space. We got a house in the background and a, and a house up in the foreground. Not everything is from the, the same imagery, and that's fine. I've got a lot of different pictures from a lot of different years of a lot of different National Geographic magazines, and they're not all from the same article. So it's important to have a wide variety of imagery to work with. The collage can be its own piece of artwork. Um, but anyway, so let's get going on this. What I've done to start with is I've gone through and simply flipped through the magazine to find imagery that I was interested in. And I've already gathered everything, so you don't need to see me flip through and pull more images, but I don't really have a plan for it. I just know that some images stand out to me. And so I'm gonna take those. I do know that I want this blue bit of sky. One of the things that I encourage people to do is instead of just tearing it from the magazine, we tear the whole page out so that we can keep our magazines in better shape uh, for future people to use or for us to use in the future. And then I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to use my scissors to cut that portion of the sky out. You know, you can see I'm on it to fill that space. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to be cutting out that chunk. If I wanted something a little bit more complicated, like maybe I wanted this part of the mountain, um, one of the techniques that I use and encourage is to do a lot more turning of the paper than manipulating the scissors. So my scissors pretty much is just slowly closing as my hands are rotating the, the photograph. So then I can dispose of that. And I've got a pretty good mountain cut out. I don't think I want that mountain, so I'm not gonna keep that. Another technique I've used, and I'm gonna use these clouds, is I am going to tear very carefully these clouds out. And what that does for me, you can see I've already done some of this, is it gives me a, a rougher edge to it than a crisp, sharp edge. So now that I've gathered all of my images, I've laid them out. I know what I, I basically know what I want. Um, and so I've taken these and I've arranged them. We got a little boy up front and I've got a house here. I've got some sky. I had a roof on this building that didn't quite work. So I found some other materials. I think this is a side of a ship and uh, another part of that ship. And I have created its, its roof. It's not perfect. Um, and I'm gonna assemble it and it'll become perfect or perfect-ish. I've cut a window out and notice that instead of trying to poke a hole through it and cut out, I snipped down and then cut the window out. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to start building from the background forward on this piece. I've got my glue stick and I've really laid everything out and I know where everything is gonna go so now it's a matter of doing the job. One of the things I'm always going to be doing is working background to foreground. I glue up the entire back of the piece of paper that I'm gluing down. I'm always working back to front. And so now I'm just gonna work.
So there's my, there's my collage. Now, obviously I have some open spaces and I think I'll find something else to put in here. Maybe I will find that green of the grass that I was kind of playing with. Um, yeah, I think I'll put this in here and tuck it in behind the boy. You notice that sometimes I was making some adjustments as I went along and that's fine. Um, generally speaking, I have a scratch paper that I'll do my gluing on top of instead of the bottom of my uh, artwork. But in the end, the collage um, is, is this, this is the collage. So let me peel up the little boy. See, this is why it's hard to do anything other than background foreground. You notice that these trees, this, this landscape isn't exactly right. It's a little upside down, but my world's a little upside down here and that's fine. And so in the end, this is my collage, a little tack on the back of this boy, his arm, there we go. This is going to be worked up into a painting so this won't be the finished product. Well, this in and of itself is a finished product. Oh my goodness, and that is fine. Um, but for you, this is, this is the process of collaging. Um, I'm starting with a lot of different images that don't necessarily belong together. And I'm slowly assembling things. I'm slowly building things into a composition that in and of itself makes sense. I mean, we understand we've got a foreground home. We got a house in the background of a little boy in the foreground, a little child and the sky and the clouds in the background. Um, and there's the collage. I will crop it with paper or a scissors or a mat or something like that. I don't have anything around here to grab, but that's how to collage. Background, foreground, We've got lots of images. I got lots of images I didn't use. I really liked this figure in the beginning, ended up not using her. Um, but you know, I'll save, I'll save these two women for, uh, for a different collage. That's it. Thanks for joining me. Have fun collaging.